we'll start with the prayers om sahana bhavato sahana bhunaktu sahaviryam karavavahai tejasvi navadi tamastu ma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 We are studying Panchadasi chapter 4, Dvaita Viveka Prakaranam, consisting of 69 verses. We have finished up to 59 verses. We have about 10 more verses to go before we can conclude this chapter. This chapter is called as Dvaita Viveka Prakaranam. Dvaita Viveka Prakaranam means, Dvaita means duality. What do you mean by duality in philosophy? Duality means I am the experiencer and I am experiencing the world. Experiencer is the bhokta. Experienced world is the bhogyam. Consumer and consume. Experiencer and experienced. This is called as duality. This chapter deals with viveka, dvaita viveka. Viveka means what? Discrimination. Discrimination between the experiencer and the experienced. And prakarana means chapter. Or a topic. So, Dvaita Viveka Prakaranam means analyzing the experiencer and the experienced world. It's a very deep study. It requires a lot of reflection. And those of you who are interested to know the deeper meaning of the Veda, which comes from the Upanishads, for them, this is very useful chapter. The entire text of Panchadasi is oriented towards teaching a seeker how to realize their own nature. Seekers come to the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita to learn the spiritual nature. The matter nature is very easy for us to understand. The body is made up of five elements. It's very easy. But this body is functioning because of some factor, invisible factor. The inquiry into that in invisible factor is the subject matter of all the Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita. What is it in this body which is made up of five elements exactly like the rest of the world, which is also made up of five elements. You see all around in the universe, five elements in different combinations. And for each of those, we give a name according to the form. So the Veda says the entire experienced world is it is meant for the enjoyment of the, of the individual. So, there is some individuality in this body which is different than the body. The study of that individuality is the study of the entire Vedas. Whenever you want to study the Veda, if somebody asks you, 
why are you studying Upanishads or Bhagavad Gita? You should be very clear. And you should be able to explain to them in the way I've expressed to you that the world is made up by pancha bhutas, the uh, five elements. And I am also made up of pancha bhutas, but there is a difference between me and the world. The world doesn't have consciousness. It is not a conscious world. world. This, the objective world. But all the human beings have got one extra factor in them. And that is what is called as pure consciousness. According to Veda, it is this pure consciousness which is behind the individual in this body. It is the study of this consciousness, awareness, which Vidyaranya deals with in this chapter. At the end of the study, what you should know? You should know that I am of the nature of consciousness and the entire world <coughs> is made up of matter, it is jada. We have finished up to 59 verses. Let me now go into the 60th verse. Chant the verse first. Dhyayato vishayan pumsaha Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangas Teshu Pajayate Sangas Teshu Pajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha Sanghat Sanjayate Kamaha Kamat Krodo Bijayate Kamat Krodho Bijayate. This verse is very, very familiar to most of us. It comes in Bhagavad Gita, the second chapter, and it is the sixty second mantra. Chapter two. Verse number 62, Bhagavad Gita. It has been bodily lifted by Vidyaranya and put here. Why is he putting this verse here? We are studying what is Jiva Srishti. What is the creation of the which the uh, uh, individual is doing in this body. Jiva Srishti. Jiva's creation is what is the topic right now for study. We have finished Ishwara Srishti. Ishwara is a designer of the world. He designs the world according to the prarabdha karma of all the Jivas. It's like a contractor. You want to build a house, you don't do it yourself, you give it to a contractor. What does the contractor do? He will take the design from you. How many floors do you want? Where do you want the living room? Where do you want the, uh, you know, the, the kitchen and all that, the design. So Yeshwara Srishti means the creation of the world of Pancha Bhutas, including my gross body and my subtle body. Subtle body is the mind that is also created by Ishvara. What is not created by Ishvara is the Karana Sharira. The Karana Sharira is the causal body. Now, after the, after the Jiva, see the, our 
external body plus the mind is given to us by Ishwara. Who is the Jiva? Jiva is the one who enters the mind. Jiva is always there. So when the gross body goes away, it doesn't mean that the Jiva is dead. Jiva is still there. The gross body is dead. So the Jiva in this mind enters that subtle mind and then he lives in this body as a the body is like a tenant, a tenant, a tenement, it's like a house. For a few years, could be 40, 50, 100 years, the jiva lives in the, along with the mind, he lives. Now in this verse, Swami Vidyaranya says, how do we fall from our real nature of awareness, consciousness, into this world. Very beautiful mantra, verse. Try to understand this. It's one of the best verses of psychology. It can be practically used by us in our day-to-day -day life. What is the meaning of this? Dhyayato vishayan pumsaha. When a man dwells mentally on any object of desire. Suppose I want to buy a car. I have a desire for car first. Having a desire for car is not a problem. But repeatedly thinking, I want a car, I want a car, I want a car, I want a car tomorrow, I want to buy, I want to go. That is what is called as dhyaya, dhyayatam vishayan umsaha. Vishaya is the car. I am think I am the I am the individual in this body who is thinking repeatedly about this car. Sangha Sangha When this desire comes in the mind, an attachment is developed for the object which is outside and with the desirer. That is the second step. First step is what? Dwelling. Second step is attachment. Third step. What does the attachment do? Attachment gives a rise to a longing for the object. Again and again, for days together, you think, I should have that, I should have that. This is the third level. When you have that longing desire, which is called as Trishna, deep desire, it can have two, two types of results. One result is you go and get the object of desire. The second is, you don't get the object. If you don't get the object for some reason, either that particular car is not available or suppose you don't have the money to buy the car, what happens? You become angry. So unfulfilled desire leads to anger. Fulfilled desire, what happens? Suppose you fulfill the desire. Then what happens? After five years, you will say, I want to have another car. You don't stop with the first car. You say, now it's time for me to buy a second car. So greed develops. So this is what is explained in this particular verse. In the next verse is a continuation of this verse. I have added that verse also in this in the actual Panchadasi, the second 60A is not added, but I have added it so that you have a full picture of the whole process of the fall of a jiva. Now, in this, what we Vidyaranya wants to convey is, he said that jiva srishti is of two types. One is 
Shastriya Jeeva Shristi, which is according to the Shastra, you should do it. Which is what? Shravanam Mananam Nidityasana. That we should do for some time. After a period of study, maybe 10 years, 15 years, once you feel that I have had enough knowledge from the scriptures, you can drop it. Then the second Shrishti, Jeeva Shrishti, he said is a Shastriya Jeeva Shrishti. A Shastriya Jeeva Shrishti means what? Jeeva's creation, which is not as per the Shastra. It is an instinct which comes automatically in all human beings. What are those instincts? Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Masarya. Kama means desire. Krodha means anger. Lobha means greed. Madha means jealousy. Moha means delusion. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. Matsarya is the jealousy. Madha means pride. Madha means pride. Matsarya means jealousy. Now, these are all the constituents of the mind. They are all different vrittis. They are not thoughts in different forms. It is all, all these are thoughts only. The basic raw material in the mind is a thought. It is called as, in Sanskrit, it is called as vritti. So different types of vrittis are there in the mind. It has been categorized very beautifully in our Shastra. And these vrittis, Kama, Krodha, Loba, these are called as inner enemies of all human beings. Why are they called as inner human beings, inner enemies? Because they steal the mind away from our real nature. What does this mean? Suppose I don't have these thoughts in my mind, I will be a very calm person, quiet person, just living in my own nature which is awareness, consciousness. When these thoughts come, what happens in my mind? It creates a disturbance. The disturbance is called as rajoguna. When the mind is calm, it is called as sattva guna. All those people who have done the Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, they know sattva, rajas and tamas. Tamas means what? Tamas means I'm very lazy. I don't want to neither do anything, neither I want to learn anything. I just want to sleep or I just want to be lazy today. Vishayan Dhyayataha. Rumination or mental reflection on the objects of, ple uh, of pleasure is called as Vishaya Dhyanam. Pumsaha means a person who is reflecting on them. When you reflect what happens, you create an attachment. According to the Upanishads, they say objects do not have joy in themselves. We feel a sense of fondness towards the objects. That is what is called as Sangaha. Why we say that objects don't have any joy in them? Because for one person, one object can give joy, but this, for the same object does not give joy for the other person. Another person may not like a car at all. He wants to have a good exercise every day in the morning. He wants to go out to the bus stop, take a walk, and he's very happy doing that. Whereas you want to buy a car. So the object of car need not give all the people joy. Therefore, Shastra says 
the joy is in the mind of a person it is not in the object you have to experiment with this fact it is not easy for you us to uh, to accept it immediately but you experiment it in your own life it takes a long time for us for us to uh, realize this this particular fact given out by upanishads taitri upanishad clearly tells us how this is the case in the world so when we study taitri upanishad on saturdays at that time i'll explain go into the depth of this whole topic called as ananda where does ananda lie is it in the object outside is it in the beings outside or it is my own ananda which is getting reflected in the mind then the mind becomes calm till i get the object i keep on getting disturbed by the thought i want it i want it i want it suppose i possess the object then what happens that disturbance in the mind the fluctuation in the mind it stops for a period of time you have peace in the mind in that peaceful mind what happens according to the shastra according to taitri upanishad in a peaceful mind the the consciousness awareness which is of the nature of bliss gets reflected in a sattvic mind and we experience that which is called as experiential joy all of us have experienced this experiential joy all of us have experienced but we don't know the fact that this experiential joy is a conditional joy depending on the conditions external conditions my joy in the mind can fluctuate this is what one part of taitri upanishad in ananda mimamsa the second part of ananda mimamsa is i'm just giving you a small extra information about happiness for you to ruminate over this topic on your own the second part of the happiness in taitri upanishad is all the happiness which we experience is fleeting it remains for a few hours few minutes few days few months few years but it it is not permanent what is that permanent happiness which i am seeking in life is it outside or is it my nature this is a question asked by the rishis in the past they all experience joy but there is another joy which is our nature which is not conditional it is unconditional joy upanishad challenges us and says joy which is your own nature it is unconditional and you are you always remain blissful by nature by nature you, that is atma that is what is called as atma sukham it is a natural bliss which is totally different than the bliss or the fleeting joy which is experiential nech swarupa ananda and vishaya ananda i'm using two terms, sanskrit terms to discriminate swarupa ananda is the original nature all of us have it only thing is i have not discriminated between the two 
in our sleep state we all say i had a good sleep peaceful sleep how did that joy in the sleep come where did it come from there was no object in the sleep this is one of the logic used by vedanta to say that you can remain peaceful and happy if you don't have an object so if you study vedanta and you go through these type of verses you will be at peace all the time because you have got you have known the analysis of happiness it's a very big topic i am just going to stop here but i just wanted to give you this additional information very big topic for those who want to learn about this topic of happiness more details about swarupa ananda and vishaya ananda you should study taitri upanishad so while thinking on a object it is called as manorajya i developed a sangha which is a fondness for an object because of desire kamaha when the desire is fulfilled it leads to lobha greed when the desire is not fulfilled it leads to krodha and moha moha means delusion what is the delusion objects give me happiness is the delusion i don't have that object therefore i am angry i didn't get it i struggled for it but i didn't get it my friend who didn't even study he got the first rank therefore i am angry jealous now when a desire is fulfilled suppose one desire gets fulfilled you wanted to earn say 1 1 lakh rupees per month or 100000 dollar 10000 dollars per month when you have fulfilled that desire two things are possible one day, what what is when fulfilled desire leads to pride madha unfulfilled desire leads to jealousy matsarya see how this whole chart is so wonderful this is the gita 62nd verse of the second chapter it has got two verses there 62 and 63 it explains this particular chart kamat krodho vijayate this is what explaining that when kama is not fulfilled then it leads to anger this is the inner path this is a very subtle uh, process which happens to all our minds but we are not we are not uh, we don't cognize this clearly this desire is called as a shastriya jeeva srishti whenever this desire comes it is called as jeeva srishti and panchadasi swami vidyananda says slowly slowly gradually we have to reduce our desires normal desires for food shelter clothing these are normal desires there's no problem here we are talking about the thievery type i must have that fulfilled without that desire being fulfilled i am unhappy that is what is called as thievery desire and that is what is called as moha we lose the sense of right and wrong so manorajya manorajya means vishayan pumsaha at the seed level whenever a desire comes in you have to pluck it out that is what is called as conquering the mind okay so this chart so th th that is about this particular verse this these extra notes which are there are uh, basically for you is a revision notes from 57 to 60 you can go through them we have already done all this so you can do when you study the open uh, the same text again this will help you
the sankalpa or uh, that uh, uh, vishaya dhyanam is also called as shobhana adhyasa what what is shobhana adhyasa shobhana adhyasa means i the objects don't have any pleasure but i am superimposing pleasure on those objects this is the problem shobhana adhyasa all those who have done the adhyasa bhashyam you should remember that here adhyasa means what superimposition the object outside is just a simple object it is it is just an object in the creation but when i desire it it becomes a vishaya for me joy is in the na is the nature of the self but i am superimposing that on the object when mind is quietened by fulfilling the irritation or the agitations stop then this self which is the nature of happiness manifests in the quiet mind which is what i explained before this is an additional verse from the bhagavad gita the 63rd verse of the bhagavad gita krodha okay let me just uh, play it out for you क्रोधाति सोह क्रोधाति सोहाम सोहाति स्मृतिभ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो स्मृतिभ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्य बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्य दीज टू वर्सेस आर जनरली टेकन अप इन मेनी मैनेजमेंट सेमिनार्स आल्सो एंड टू एक्सप्लेन द नेचर ऑफ टू नेचर द नेचर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड वेयर डज द हैप्पीनेस लाइ एंड सो ऑन दीज आर वेरी टू इंपॉर्टेंट वर्सेस फॉर ऑल साइकोलॉजिकल स्टूडेंट्स हु स्टडी द नेचर ऑफ द माइंड and uh, knowing these two verses uh, and understanding it clearly it will change your mind you can transform your mind just using two verses from bhagavad gita reflect on them check whether these two verses are telling the truth in your own experience from anger comes delusion whenever you are angry an angry person is a deluded person because actually speaking that anger should not be there in the mind why the anger is there because you have not got what you want you want a particular dish and your wife gives you some other dish you are angry salt is less you want salt so anything which is against your desire is the cause of anger always study this you see uh, anger is a instinctive process it just happens you see children if you don't give them the toy they desire suddenly they will become angry and delusion which is moha what is the result of delusion you forget what is right what is wrong there is loss of memory so from anger comes moha delusion from moha delusion comes memory loss smriti bhramshah and what is this smriti bhramshah lead to it leads to loss of buddhi loss of buddhi means discriminative ability 
you can't distinguish between what is good for you, what is bad for you. Then what happens? Ultimately, you will perish. Perish means what? You will fall down in the society. So by seeing the dosha drishti, you can stop the manorajya. You see what is the problem, what are the deficiencies in this whole process, then what will happen? You will be more in control of your mind and you will stop your manorajya, which is what, which is what uh, Vidyarana wants actually to do. Manorajyam is impulsive thinking. Because of your wrong superimposition of joy in the world of objects. How? Okay, now you have explained to me uh, this uh, whole process of desire, from desire comes uh, anger, anger to delusion, delusion to uh, all this process you have clearly ex explained to me. Now tell me how can I stop this desire? That is what we discuss in the next verse. Thievers can be, uh, so one method of stopping this is dosha drishti. Dosha drishti means you should, you should find out what is the deficiency in my thinking. Is my thinking correct? Actually speaking, is it really worth having that object or will that object gives me more pain in the long term? In the short term, it may be appearing very, very good, but it may be a poison in the long term. By doing this dosha drishti, this is one method of controlling their desires. What is the second method? This Vidyarnya takes up in this verse, 61. Shakyam jetum mano rajyam Shakyam jetum mano rajyam Nirvikalpa samadhitaha Nirvikalpa samadhitaha Susampada kramat sopi Susampada kramat sopi Savikalpa samadhina Savikalpa samadhina This chatting is done by Vijaya, one of our participants of the class. Uh, very beautifully, she has chanted all these verses. Now, in this verse, Vidyaranya gives us a technique which we can use. Slowly, we can use it. It, it will not come immediately, but it is something which we can develop. What does he say in this verse? This Manorajyam, Manorajyam wandering in the world, of objects can be overcome by meditation. He's going to give us a technique of meditation in the next one or two verses. He will explain to us what type of meditation will help us. He will tell us that. Here he is saying, you, you take up meditation. On what here? Here he says, on the attribute less Brahman. Attribute less Brahman means what? On that pure consciousness, they keep thinking more about it. I am of the nature of awareness. I am of the nature of pure awareness. Without the objects, without the body, I am of the nature of Chaitanyam, consciousness. This is what Vidyaranya says will help you to reduce the rajas in your mind, the tendency of the guna. See, we should never criticize our mind. We should be a friend of our mind. Then we can get a lot of things done by the mind. 
suppose you keep, keep on criticizing yourself i am you know i am so bad i'm so bad i'm so bad you keep on telling yourself i am bad i am bad i am bad i am angry i i i, I don't like my mind no that is not the way to think you should say i would like to correct myself due to some reasons i am having some problems in my mind but i have got also the means to correct my mind all of us are, are deluded 99.9% of the people are all deluded this process which i have explained to you in 60 and 68 it is a common error for all of us. So this can be avoided by dosha drishti, which we discussed in the previous verse. And now he says, by meditating on the pure awareness. Can I meditate on pure awareness in the immediately? Maybe not. That is why he says, Gradually, you have to grow from meditating on Ishvara with form and then go to the Nirguna Brahman. That is the essence of this verse. So it is possible to conquer and destroy this Mano Rajam completely. Completely. Is it possible? Yes. That is what Vidyarani is telling us here. That's the teaching here. And he has also explained what happens when you have quieted the mind. When you have quieted the, the whole process of yoga shastra, ashtanga yoga, is for quietening the mind. Whole process, eight steps are given in ashtanga yoga. Ultimate, what is your goal in ashtanga yoga? Quieten the mind. But don't stop there. Come back to Vedanta and study Veda after quietening the mind. So Shastri is, here we are talking about the Ashastriya Jiva Srishti, which we need to quieten from Tivra to Mandha. Tivra means very acute. You can't stop wandering your mind. You see, there is the mind is 100% preoccupied. Hold it. Instinctively, it is preoccupied. Slowly by doing this meditation, you will be able to bring down the force of rajas. So, Thivra Kama Krodha Loba thoughts can be brought down by meditation. Nirvikalpa Samadhi Tha. What is Nirvikalpa Samadhi? It is absorption in the thought that I am of the nature of pure awareness. Don't get carried away by words, words like samadhi and all that. Don't get carried away. It is very simple. Whenever you are able to say, because you have come to Shastra, you see, till you come to Shastra and study the scriptures deeply, all these words like samadhi is only for people sitting down in Himalayas and all that, you will be thinking. Samadhi means dhi. Intellect is samam. It's equipoised. How do you make the intellect equipoised in, instead of running around in the world by claiming I am of the nature of pure awareness? Consciousness, which is what we learn in meditation se sessions after this class. So, the uh, ant will go towards sugar, honey. But if it is a stone, ant will not go towards that. So when you know where the actual sweetness comes from, which is your Atma, then you will not go to running behind the objects. So when you give, for example, to a peacock, you give them plants and seeds, then it will come, it will allow you to touch 
Similarly, a deer also. It will allow you to touch the moment you give it some grass. Similarly, what you do is you give the mind what it likes naturally. It likes peace, quietude. That is its strength. That is where the strength of a mind comes from. How do you give it? By telling the mind its nature is pure consciousness, pure awareness. The mind forgets this and then runs behind the word. So, Ajnanam, ignorance, causes desire. Ajnanam causes karma. Avidya, karma, karma. This is the step. Avidya is ignorance about yourself. Desire comes for the world. Karma. And then you set up into action. These three, Avidya, Kama, Karma, these are the three legs on which the whole samsara rests. If you want to break that tripod, you need to remove the legs by telling your own mind, I am of the nature of consciousness. Really, it will happen. Try it out. It's a challenge given by Lord Krishna in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So many verses are there which tells you how to quieten the mind. Again and again, shanai shanai ruparame. Again and again, whenever the mind goes outside, slowly, gradually bring it to your focus. And what is the central focus? Awareness. Atma. So, through the practice of absorption of the mind, which is called as nirvikalpa, vikalpa means modification. Nirvikalpa means modificationless mind. Still mind. It's like the flicker of a flame. Suppose you have a flickerless flame. How will it be? That is how Lord Krishna describes our mind in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. I, I am clearly able to watch my mind, which is flickerless. That is the success of meditation. So, there is no one of the methods they teach in meditation is. Focus on Abheda. Abheda means seeing no difference in your mind. Sajatiya, Vijatiya, Swagata, Bheda, Rahitav. I have explained these three words in my previous classes. I won't repeat it. In case somebody is interested, I can explain to them separately. But here, what it means is I don't develop the Triputi, which is the experiencer, experienced in the mind, and thus I gain absorption in the Atma. All these are talking about the same, how to, how to meditate. It, uh, initially, you can meditate on Rama, Krishna, Devi. It, it is possible with form. But after some time, you should see, you should quieten the mind. Once the mind is quietened, then only you will be able to see the drishti. You will be able to see the dosha, the defect in this type of thinking. Okay? So this explains that uh, essence of the verse is that I have to meditate in order to conquer my mind. Okay? Next verse. These are all techniques given by Panchadasi. Buddha Tattve Nadhi Dosha Buddha Tattve Nadhi Dosha Shunye Naikanta Vasina 
ಶೂನ್ಯೇನೈಕಾಂತವಾಸಿನಾ ದೀರ್ಘ ಪ್ರವಣಮುಚ್ಚಾರ್ಯ ದೀರ್ಘ ಪ್ರವಣಮುಚ್ಚಾರ್ಯ ಮನೋರಾಜ್ಯಂಬಿಜೀಯತೆ ಮನೋರಾಜ್ಯಂಬಿಜೀಯತೆ Sixty second verse also gives us what should I do after my mind becomes relatively quiet. And how does the how do we achieve this quietude of the mind by remembering my nature of consciousness? Then what will happen? Then he says. for some time you practice om japa japa of om means what you chant om and you stop you chant om and you stop we have done this meditation right at the beginning in my meditation sessions right at the beginning the first five meditations is all on om meditations that is what he is recommending to stop the vagaries of the mind see mind control is a, is a challenge for most of us it's a big challenge but it is possible never give up throughout your life all of us can practice this these are small small hints given by swami vidyaranya if we make use of this it will help us in our spiritual go bhu buddha tatvena one by one who has got the clarity of the atma tatvam atma tatvam means what body mind is anatma the experience of consciousness is atma this is the tatvam i should know tatvam means what it's a principle it's a principle in this world this is how the world is created by the lord there is an experience of consciousness and there is experience world the more i fo- focus on the consciousness aspect my mind will become more and more controlled once it gets the control then you can sit in solitude for a period of time practice om japa what will then happen my i myself will be able to watch my mind's quietude give the work, uh, give the job of chanting om to the mind because your mind always wants to be active that is the nature of the mind rajoguna so normally you will give something in the field of objects you will be worrying about your family worrying about your money problems you will be worrying so many worries are there those are all our preoccupation of the mind it just naturally comes but by doing this omkara japa you will be able to give a new direction to the mind and by doing this vidyaranya says you are sure to achieve success in the spiritual field shastra yonitwa this is the third mantra or the uh sutra of brahma sutra brahman is known only through the scriptures brahman the yoni of shastra it is only in the shastra it is the womb of shastra which will explain what is this awareness conscious my parents have only given birth to the external body they have not given birth to the consciousness 
consciousness is my real nature. It can never be born. Ajaha. It can never have death. The more I meditate on Om, the more I will be convinced. Conviction comes by practice of Om meditation. I will, what is this Om meditation? It is explained very beautifully in Mandukya Upanishad. Just the gist of it I have given here. Om stands, comes from three alphabet, A, O, Ma. The letter A stands for the waker. The letter O stands for the dreamer. The letter M stands for the sleeper. So the waker dissolves in the dreamer. The dreamer dissolves in the sleeper. Again, from the sleep state, again I come back to waking. So by chanting Om with this meaning, understanding that there is an individual in this body who goes through the three states and then rests for some time in silence. Between the two Oms, there is a silence. That silence period is called as Brahman. Such a beautiful meditation it is. When we do Mandukya Upanishad, I have done Mandukya before, so this is a very, very, very crucial, critical meditation which is taught there. Only when you do this type of Omkara meditation, then you realize what is Vyaktam and what is Abhyakt. Vyaktam means in the waking state, the world appears. Abhyakta means in the sleep state, it resolves into Maya, Maya Shakti. It is Maya Shakti to which the world resolves in sleep. That is what is the Omkara meditation. By doing this meditation, I will get Chitta Ekagrata, one-pointedness of the mind which is so useful in our, my day-to-day -day life. Why is Chitta Ekagrata important? Because if I'm able to dwell on one subject for a longer time, I can find out so many solutions to my problems. Because my mind is very limited and it is not able to focus properly, I get in, deluded very fast. So these techniques of meditations, they really help us in our day-to-day -day life. I will take this 63rd mantra next week. Uh, next week is, uh, we will try to complete this chapter, 63 to 69, even if it takes five, 10 minutes more, I will try to wrap up this chapter because the following week, we may have a break. I will, uh, from the 1st of February to 11th of February, I will be traveling. So there may be break for two weeks for the Wednesday class. Uh, from 1st February to 11th February, for those of you, you can just revise this chapter in that break period of say about 10 days. One or two, two sessions will miss. But next week, I will complete this chapter so that if you want to revise quickly, you can run through only the verse meanings because now you know what the verses are. If you go through the meanings, you will immediately get the meaning. If you go through the verses quickly, if you want, you can within roughly two hours, you can two to three hours, you can finish. You can take 10, 10 verses and then quickly revise before we get to the next chapter. So next week, I will start with the 63rd verse. All these verses are all pointing towards how to control the mind, what to meditate on, and why do we do this? To stop our Jiva Srishti. Why do I need to stop the Jiva Srishti? So that I can realize my pure nature.
It's a very beautiful chapter, chapter four of the Panchadasi. Very beautiful, very well designed. 69 verses are there. And uh, not normally taken up in any major text. You see, this Jiva Srishti and Ishwar Srishti is a very focused approach. Only we will find it in Panchadasi. Oh, or Namada, or Namidam, or or Namuda Chave. Or Nasya, or Namathaya. Or Nameva Vasishate. Om Shanti 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 Okay, uh, I'll go through the Sorry, something happened. Yeah. I'll go through the chat box and then uh, you can ask questions yourself. The Panchadasi uh, seems to say moha to krodha. And here Sri Krishna says krodha to moha. Okay. See, you should understand you, 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 because you are deluded, you get anger. Or you are angry because you are deluded. You should ask this question yourself. Find an answer. Check your own experiences. The general truth is that whenever you are angry, it means you are deluded. You do not understand what is right what is wrong that leads to anger when lord krishna says from krodha arises moha what he means is that due to krodha you are also deluded both are right, both, there is no problem in this. You should basically understand the nature of your mind and how, because of desires, the starting point is very important. Desire is the main culprit. Once you are able to control your desire, Krodha and Moha, these are all the side effects, the other things which can, which come after that. It is an effect of desire. Moha means delusion. Krodha means anger. I don't get something. But why did you become angry? Because of delusion in your mind. You got deluded by the objects. Therefore, you became, you had that desire, you had the longingness for that object. So, am I clear, Vijay? Do you have any other points here? Okay, so this is one point which I was raised. Uh, is there anybody else has any other question or any other remark you would like to mention? You, are un you, are, you can unmute yourself and then you can ask the questions. Shekhar, yeah, I just want to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, Vigadesh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really very wonderful uh, 
uh, lessons what we have today yeah we think this uh, jiva srushti and uh, psychology of the whole mind and uh, the technique what is uh, already given uh, by vidyaranya very yeah. beautifully explained and i could see that uh, so many upanishads together whether it is uh, <coughs> Kaitreya Upanishad or uh, Mandukya or Kaivalya, all that has put into one particular uh, these uh, aspects. Yeah. I just want to highlight like uh, what I find is so interesting is Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mada, which he has further done the analysis of the whole mind and all, they're all different forms of desire basically. As a, right. yeah, as, as a seeker, I do not need to see whether it is a karma, karoda, loba and all that because uh, I personally feel the desire is a basic thing which is the one which requires to be controlled. This is the intensity of desire at the different stages which has different forms actually. So the beautiful uh, way what he has suggested uh, is a meditation. And meditation, I find, is one of the best technique to control this entire anger management and uh, entire desire. And I see there are two different techniques. One is simple meditation and another is that home meditation. And I always see when we do meditation, what happens is this flow of thoughts that control. Once the flow of but mind is nothing but like what uh, Vidyaranya has made it clear in so many verses and all, a simple bundle of thoughts. And when that flow reduces, the intensity of desire comes down and uh, we start entering into that, whether it is a Savikalpa or Nivikalpa Samadhi and all, everything it happens. The discriminatory powers that really enhances when we do this uh, meditation. <clears throat> The thoughts, it goes down and uh, it takes time. Initially, it does not happen like what Yoga Patanjali also says, Bahudirga Kala. It takes a long, long time and it is a very slow process and it's a continuous uh, uh, process. So what I just uh, see is once we start doing this meditation, the, either by doing OM meditation or the regular meditation, by doing OM, that vritti, what it forms, it is replacing the different thoughts into one particular thought, the thought of the consciousness, the pranava. <clears throat> so that really makes a big difference in the long run to control this entire management. The way Vidyaranya has explained uh, very uh, beautifully, so I feel meditation is a real big tool to control this entire uh, <clears throat> jiva sushti and the uh, mind and uh, go into that direction of that uh, consciousness. Like see the Savikalpa Samadhi, Nidhikalpa Samadhi, all these different definitions. And also when I just see that Om Bhur Bhuva Diyo Yona Prachodayat. So what it says is, Controlling the thoughts, which controls the desire, which sharpens the intellect. When the sharpens the intellect, you will have a good desires. When it has a good desire, your actions will be done in a right way. So that is what leads you to control everything. To become a good person or to go towards the spirituality or conquer and go in the direction of uh, understanding the consciousness. Everything it happens it falls in place yeah, all this all this has been yeah. very beautifully put in this chapter of jiva srishti and ishwara srishti you see yes in that, the, uh, that, the that, way vidyaranya has already put it it's really beautiful very beautiful. yeah very well very well explained in this chapter of 69 verses yeah and uh, you know going through these verses again and again will help you clarify your own mind very easily yeah. See, all of us are all uh, disturbed, not much by the external world, but by our own mind. Yeah. And it is my mind which disturbs me. 
So if I can control my mind through some of these techniques which have been described in this chapter, beautifully described by Vidyar, and in small, small ways he has clarified yeah. how you can uh, yeah. realize your nature as the Atma and how you can distance yourself from the mind. Exactly. That is the beauty of this chapter. Yeah. Anybody else has a question? Nita, you're coming for the first time. Anybody else has any other questions or remarks? So after this chapter, we are going to do chapter 5 of Panchadasi. We have uh, 63 on verse 69. Hopefully, I will try to finish it next week. After this, we are going to do a very important chapter, the most important chapter in Panchadasi. Out of 15 chapters, the fifth chapter is the ultimate. Because it is going to teach us how I should analyze the greatest truth of the scriptures, which is the Mahavakya. The four Mahavakyas, Swami Vidyaranya analyzes in eight verses. That's all. The whole chapter is only eight verses. And uh, it has taken, uh, it, it, it takes into consideration all the important aspects of the Mahavakyas. He's got a very beautiful style, so I'm sure you all of you will uh, relish that chapter, which we will start after the break. Uh, on the 11th, 12th, I'll be back, and uh, so we will start the, the fifth chapter on the, so our, we are in 23rd, uh, 18th today, next week is 25th. After that, on the first, I'm traveling, and on the 15th will be the talk. First uh, and 8th, I will, I'm not here in Singapore. 15th, I'm back. So 15th of February, we'll be starting chapter 5 of Panchadasi, which is the Mahavakya chapter. Very beautiful chapter. The essence of the Upanishads, the essence of Bhagavad Gita, how to analyze my real nature. That is what is explained in chapter 5 of Panchadas. Okay, if there are no other questions, then we'll stop today and then uh, we'll continue next week and uh, we'll try to see if we can finish this chapter. Thank you. Good night. Hario. Hario. Hello. Hello.